Hello, Booktopians. Today, I have the great pleasure of being joined by Philip Bunting, author of Give Me Some Space and a National Simultaneous Storytime Selection for this year. Hello, Philip. Welcome to Booktopia. Hey, Mark. Thank you for having me. Uh, so what's the most fun thing about creating books for children? Good question. I guess, um, well, I have a bit of Scottish ancestry and I definitely have more fun making my money than I do spending it. But, uh, so I, I love what I do. Um, but I think probably the most fun thing about making books for kids would be that, you know, I'm, I'm a parent myself. I have an eight, a six and a three year old. And really, you know, I spend most of my spare time reading when I'm not making books, reading books to those little munchkins. Um, so the thing I like most about creating books for children is that I get to create kind of a, a platform for other families to have the same experience that I have at, at home with my kids. So as, as far as, you know, my experience tells, like a book is probably the single best platform for that intergenerational engagement with your kids that no, no, other, no other technology really can provide, certainly nothing screen-based or... Um, I guess, you know, sports and things have their place, but yeah, in my experience, there's no, no better way to kind of engage with your children than, than flicking through a picture book and interpreting it in your own way, asking questions, making silly noises and voices, and just having a bit of fun reading. Um, so yeah, just having the privilege to really kind of create a platform for other families to have that same experience. I think, yeah, that's the thing I like best about what I do. Can you tell can you tell us a little bit about Give Me Some Space? Yeah, sure. So um, Give Me Some Space is a, a, it's a fictional picture book, um, and it follows one young girl's journey. Who's, she's very much space obsessed, as you can probably guess by the, the cover and the suit and the fishbowl helmet. Um, so the book follows Una's journey to leave the boring old Earth behind and explore her mission to find life in space. So she, yeah, long story short, she, she finds a way to, to leave the planet and she hops around the solar system looking for life in space. And it's only when she um, reaches the Kuiper Belt at the edge of our solar system, which is a big donut-shaped ring of ice and rocks, which Pluto is a part of somewhere, um, that she discovers that there is life in space. Uh, now, I'm not sure if you want to go into any any spoiler territory here, but um, I might leave it there for now. That's the flavor of the book. Yeah, let's avoid, let's avoid spoilers. Um, can you tell us a little bit about National Simultaneous Storytime? Uh, yes, so National Simultaneous Storytime, of which Give Me Some Space is the official book this year, uh, is an initiative of the Australian Libraries and Information Association, ALIA, whereby an Australian author is selected each year to create a book specifically to be read to as many children around the country as possible simultaneously in the month of May. Now, um, this year, ALIA, the Australian Libraries and Information Association, put their heads together with the publisher of the book, Scholastic, who um, kind of gave the initiative a little bump and they decided to send this year's book into space. And so there's a copy of Give Me Some Space up there on the International Space Station right now. It's actually been up there since about August last year, um, floating around somewhere. Uh, but on the 19th of May at 11 a.m., so that's a Wednesday and a school day, um, a, a NASA astronaut called Shannon Walker, who is currently the head of the ISS, uh, will be reading Give Me Some Space to, we hope, over one million children around Australia, New Zealand, and wherever they are in the world, um, simultaneously. So yeah, 19th of May, 11 a.m., and it'll be a live reading. I'll be, I'll be doing a bit of kind of um, sideshow Bob work down in Adelaide at the new Space Discovery Center down there. So I'll be hosting a, a, a smaller event. Um, to kind of prepare prepare for the day. But yeah, it's um, the, the big, the key date to remember is the Wednesday the 19th of May at 11 a.m. And we're encouraging as many schools, libraries, bookshops, families, daycare centers 
um, to head over to the ALIA website and sign up and register for, Give Me, uh, for National Simultaneous Storytime, which is completely free and it should be heaps of fun. Um, the URL to go to, I'm not sure if we can put this below in a little caption, but is um, alia.org.au forward slash NSS. Um, registration's free, takes less than, less than a minute and super easy, even I could do it. Um, and what was it like when you found out that not only uh, you were um, going to be doing National Simultaneous Storytime, but that your book would be going to space? Yeah, it was pretty um, pretty bizarre. I was actually on a on a European holiday with my little family. We were on a train from uh, Sitges in Spain to Barcelona um, when Claire, the publisher from Scholastic, called me. And so it was a really patchy line. We were going in and out of tunnels, but she was explaining the concept. And it was all top secret because there were so many parties involved. You know, the publisher, Alia, uh, the chief scientist here in Australia, the, the Australian Space Agency, NASA. So no one was allowed to know, but there's probably about 50 people on that carriage in Catalonia somewhere who can tell you that they knew about National Simultaneous Storytime a long, a long time before they were supposed to. Um, but yeah, it was quite, you know, I, words can't describe it really you know they, they told me about the initiative and uh, offered me the chance to to create the book specifically for national simultaneous story time so yeah quite a quite a privilege um and uh, i know that like if, if you look up into the night sky at the right time when the earth is in the right kind of place you can actually see the international space station fly overhead have you have you had a look out the window and, and watched it fly overhead and what's it like to know that um that something that you have created is up there orbiting the Earth. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's quite amazing. We're, we're lucky enough to live in the middle of nowhere here in Yumundi, so there's plenty of night sky to see. And yeah, we we see the we see the ISS floating over. It's uh, it's about 400 kilometers above uh, the surface of the Earth, so it's quite visible when it tracks across the sky. And you can use um, there's heaps of apps out there that you can download, you know, on your mobile to um, to track the ISS. But um, yeah, the thing I like about my book being up there probably is that, you know, books are now what a 500 year old piece of technology. So I think I'd like to think that my contribution is the, the lowest tech piece of technology on the ISS. <laughs> and what do what your kids make of all of this? Yeah, they're pretty, pretty um, ambivalent at the moment, you know, they're pretty nonplussed. Um, and my yeah i swear my my the my eldest who's eight years old he's been listening to too many american podcasts or something because he's starting to tell me that the moon landing was a hoax and so yeah oh, he's a little bit like he's a bit on the fence about it he'll believe it when he sees it so <laughs> yeah but um no i'm joking they're, they're pretty they're, they're pretty chuffed you know and it'll be it'll be a huge day through through all of the schools in australia hopefully they're all in well, two of them are in primary, one's one's still at home, but um yeah, they're they're very much forward to looking looking forward to NSS on the nineteenth. And um the, the copy that's on the International Space Station, do you know what's gonna happen to it after um NSS? Is it going to stay up there? Is it gonna be returned to Earth? Are they gonna throw it out into the universe and fire it into the sun? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm not actually sure. I'll have to ask um our friends at the space agency there. Um I'm, my assumption is that it'll come back down to Earth, but I know that when the um, when it was sent up there back in August last year on like a cargo mission, also on board the same cargo ship, where um, there was a crop of radishes of all things that they you know that the astronauts were trying to grow up there in in the lab in space, but also a space toilet. And now, don't ask me how a space toilet works. But um, I had a sneaking suspicion that if they ran out of space toilet roll, that that copy of Give Me Some Space might come in handy. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't, we're not quite sure yet. So it still might come to a, a bit of a grisly end at the grisly end of an astronaut. <laughs> but hopefully, um, hopefully they'll send it back down. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hmm. um, if you had the opportunity, would you go to space? Uh, it's a good question. I, I, I'd love to do a day trip, 
you know, old Richard Branson's been banging on about these day trips for at least 20 years now. But if that opportunity ever arose, I think I'd take that. Um, but I certainly wouldn't be on the Elon Musk, Jeff, Jeff Bezos team of trying to uh, colonize Mars. You know, I think I'll I'll leave it till there's a, a four star hotel and a brewery up there before I visit Mars. Yeah, that sounds very civilized. <laughs> um, so um, before we let you go, can you just let us know where um, people can find more of your work? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, I guess, you know, the, all of my work's available through Booktopia and all good bookshops, libraries. And if you want to look me up online, I'm, I'm all over there too. You know, I'm not the biggest social media guy, but um, I have an Instagram profile and my website, philipbunting.com. Um, yeah, it should be pretty available by now. I've been knocking away at this for a few years, so hopefully you'll find me if, if you'd like to. I, I had a look at your Instagram um, before uh, as preparation for this, and um, you know, there's some exciting photos on there tracking tracking the journey of, uh, of the book into space and on the space station, and that's that's really fun to see. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's been it's been yeah a, a long time coming. I, as I mentioned, the uh, the book was actually sent up there. You know, it was written two years ago, sent up there in August last year, you know, as part of the quarantining and stuff that it had to do on the on the ISS. So, um, yeah, it's been hanging about there. And I've seen a couple of um, practice reads from from the astronauts, which have been pretty exciting to see. Uh, and, yeah, it's going to be pretty spectacular to see that that red light from the ISS on, on the 19th. So, yeah, very much looking forward to it. Well, Philip, thank you so much for your time today. And um, to everybody who's watching, you can get involved in National Simultaneous Storytime via the ALIA website. Uh, and you can find uh, Give Me Some Space and all of Philip Bunting's books right now at booktopia.com.au. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you.